seconds remaining. Welcome back once again, ladies and gentlemen, for our third match of six coming up here with day nine of Star Ladder Season 8. We've got Virtus Pro, one and one so far today. This is their third and final match, not going to be up against Q-Pad, Red Pandas. I didn't realize Red Pandas was Q-Pad. I had a total brain fart there at the end of the last match, Merlini. I know who these guys are. Waga Mama, how could I not recognize them? Any thoughts coming into this game? Virtus Pro going to have their work cut out for them here. And again, nah, Doom going to be drafted bad. or a band out. Uh, without Jerax. Oh, yeah, Stompa standing in here. So is this temporary? I saw some people in chat saying Jerax left. Is that, is that yeah, back? Yes. That, uh -oh. It was confirmed via his Twitter. Um, so Twitter. take that as you will. But <laughs> Q-Pad, they played versus Kawhi the other day, um, and they lost. And they lost pretty badly. Mm. So, uh, yeah, Q-Pad is not looking that good right now. Uh, I don't really know how much potential they have looking like just watching a couple of their games and um, having known some of their players. It's like, eh, it's okay. I've seen Stampa in a lot of um, a lot of the front page live games in public matchmaking. Take that as well. I've um, seen Wagamama play a decent amount. So they're not a bad team by any means, but it usually takes some time to uh, take to take the loss of one of their best players, Jerex. Yeah. Yeah, definitely right. Uh, Stampa, I, I don't know that... I guess he must have been on a, com, a high-level competitive team at one point. He's one of those guys that I see standing in a lot, but I've never really seen him on a, a dedicated team for any extended period. But uh, definitely a face. And Blue Banana as well is another face that I recognize from Season 7, I think. He was a, a pretty common stand-in. So we'll see how they fare. But once again, Doom going to be banned out. Folks are uh, wise to the strategy of old Virtus Pro there. Not going to be able to grab their beloved Doom. And actually, Virtus is probably going to ban out the execs. Two same heroes Virtus they did in the last match, if I'm not mistaken. The Elder Titan as well as the Alchemist. And it will open up for a first pick Venno once again. Crystal Maiden, Wind Ranger for Q-Pad. Not too often we see Wind Ranger in one of that early pick position. The Life Stealer at all today. Like, what in the world? What happened to Life Stealer? Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't have a good answer to that. He's another one of those heroes that I, I just yeah, value so much in any draft that I would want to put together. I guess these teams are just not a fan of the playstyle. I mean, Virtus Pro have I'm pretty seldom picked the Life Stealer, so I don't know, just not their style, I guess. And they are going to stick. Uh, they're they're sticking to their guns. Virtus Pro. Their, their drafting style reminds me of Alliance a little bit, in that it's very predictable, except the difference is their execution not quite as spot on, but they're just, they seem to be very predictable with these drafts. They try to pick Doom every game, he gets banned out, they pick Marana every game. It's not bad if it works out, though. It's true. And it's yeah. been working out for them. Oh, well, I mean, it's technically in the first game it didn't time. work out, but it, it was doing very well for them. Dire team ban. So, next round of bans going to come out here. Bane going to be banned out by Q-Pad. That classic combo with Murano. I'll be curious to see if Virtus Pro want to work in the Earthshaker again. Worked pretty well for him in the last match. Mm, yeah, I don't really see why they wouldn't. It's Again, it's, it's okay. It's not like ban-worthy. It's not that good. Uh, uh, it's, VP's Earthshaker is not that good that it's ban-worthy. It's just like decent. It's worked out for them a couple times today, so I don't really see why they wouldn't go for it and just go for a very similar draft to game number two. Um, and it's not that um power rangers had like a bad lineup either they just uh really just messed up a couple of team fights and that was really all that it was it wasn't um a outdraft i right. feel i i would definitely agree with that um and uh fury i'm gonna be banned out here as well interesting choice alongside the clockwork and there's that bristleback ban coming out from q pad so last no bristleback here in this match still very open-ended drafts though Slow draft. Yeah, slow draft. It's always hard to judge because uh, like, I try to wait until like at least the first few bands are out before I roll the videos. But sometimes, and usually, yeah. usually when I do with ASC, it's like I wait until like in between third and fourth pick on either oh, side, so like sixth or seventh hero. Like first phase, first phase is usually very boring, and especially versus VP. Like now that people are just banning Doom, it's just pretty standard, nothing unusual. Wind Ranger is like the most unusual pick, which I don't really, I personally don't like it that much because they don't have that much physical damage right now. Murana not known for her massive amounts of physical damage output and Venomancer mostly magical too. Um, so it's like mediocre. It's very good versus heroes like Lifestealer. Um, it's decent versus heroes like Weaver. 
Um, and if you can pull off the shackles, then Wind Ranger is an amazing hero. But at the same time, she is slightly susceptible to um, magical bursts. And um, she has to be very scared for like the Earthshaker Marana Pongamba. I'm not really sure what role they're going to put her in. She is a very good solo mid because she uh, does really well with runes. But you can't really shackle in. But she can rotate very well and can kind of give you that mid-game control. A kind of forgotten alternative compared to Queen of Pain or Puck. But still a very good one nonetheless. Yep. So Weaver going to be the third pick. And we'll see what Q-Pad want to grab. They're definitely taking their time here. Very meticulously trying to draft against Virtus Pro. No Weaver yet today either, which is a little bit surprising. Like everyone has uh, issued the Weaver and the Life Stealer for pretty much Marana, and it's all about Marana. Yeah, that seems to be the case. And I mean, she does work out pretty well in most cases. She most uh, teams have been able to work in at least a uh, one hard crowd control, at the very least a frostbite from the Crystal Maiden to make those arrows a little bit uh, easier. We've been seeing that kind of hard carry Marana shine in the actually the past few games today. The both of them, Marana was kind of playing that hard carry role, which uh, is a, a nice change of pace. As for a while, she was. I've gotten in many heated debates about folks of Marana's hard carry potential. She's a soft carry. She can't carry hard. She's a soft carry. Yeah, yeah. I would agree with that. She's like a carry ganker. Um, and she's like Weaver is like a carry ganker too, but it's like 70% carry, like 30% gank. Marana's, I think, is even more of a ganker than a carry. Maybe like 60 gank, 40% carry, I would say. Mm. And Storm Spirit going to be grabbed here. For the mid of Virtus Pro and uh, Bounty Hunter, gonna be that fourth fourth pick for Q Pad, the Red Pandas. So Storm Spirit on the field is it is a good good reach, and it's um, very good at shutting down Weaver. You kind of force him to get a BKB um, if you get an Orchid, because Lincoln's doesn't do the trick. You just zip and then uh, pull, and then pop the Lincoln's and then Orchid him immediately after. And I'm sure a good player like G will be able to handle that. So um, Storm Spirit, pretty scary pickup. Q Pandas, they do have a very good like fighting lineup. Crystal Mane and Wind Ranger, Weaver, Bounty Hunter, all good at fighting early in case they want to try and get ahead by going for track kills but vp does not have a shoddy one by any means so i think that if either of these teams try to fight very early like let's say like 8 to 15 minutes in neither of the team is going to have a real edge when it comes to team comp um mm -hmm. except for track i suppose is the big one but i think vp has a slightly better slightly better fight but just like barely better but nothing that um Whoa. outskill can't handle rexar gonna be the fifth pick for q pad you know, I have to admit, I'm actually a, a pretty big Beastmaster fan. He's a hero that I like watching. I, he's just interesting, the stuff that he brings to the table. Uh, what are your thoughts about the Beastmaster? Good pick here or mm, kind of I think away? he's sometimes a good pick. I think he's good when you can take advantage of roar kills and translate that into tower kills uh, with Inner Beast because I think he's very good at that. I also think it's very important if you want to play passively and go for Call of the Wild, like uh, go for Max Call of the Wild, Scout with Hawk, and then get kills very rarely here and there with Primal Roar. But I think if you want to fight a lot and often, which it seems like it's what they want to do with the Bounty Hunter, I I don't think it's a good pick because I think something like Alchemist, um, whose stun is actually, I think, about as long, if not longer, than um, Primal Roar duration, and the cooldown is like a fourth of the cooldown. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to fight early, Alchemist is much better suited for that, too, and he's, I think, a slightly better Flash Farmer, too. Um, and he's more tanky. So I think that a solo mid alchemist brings a lot more to the table in this particular matchup. Um, but having the undodgeable primal roar is very useful versus storm of spirit. Alk was banned out though, by the way. Oh yeah. Um, they can go for, I think a puck would be pretty good here too. Yep. Um, puck generally puck pretty too. good. So, uh, yeah, Beastmaster, his cooldown is a little bit too long for my liking. 80 seconds at level one. It used to be, I think like six yellow okay. levels and it got nerfed mm -hmm. and it's a pretty significant nerf. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, but he did get a small buff. Uh, of course, the Call of the Wild, now you can summon them independently, so it's a little bit easier to manage, and you can use Do them. Do not like that. Actually. Oh, you don't like, like that? I, I always thought, I heard I, that was a buff. You think it's a nerf? Um, it, you have to, like, cast it twice. Like, often when I, when you, like, roar people, you, like, roar axe and then summon all your things mm -hmm. uh, because you don't want to give it away with, like, a boar running through the lane, so you, right. like, cast from the fog and then cast all your, all of your spells, and then not having the two-in-one, I 
think the cast point got changed on it. I'm not too sure, but overall I was like, man, I have to summon both of these. It is nice when you're not fighting, but when you're actually in the middle of a fight and you want to get off Roar, a Hawk, a mm-hmm. Call of the Wild, and a Primal Roar, that's four casts that you have to do. And okay. that's not what you want to do as a melee hero. You'll lose too much yeah. positioning on it. All right. Fair enough. Fair I would, enough. I would like sense. to see three options. One for Hawk, one for Boar, and one for both. That okay. would be nice. All right. Can you do that with a macro, or is that cheating? That's not fair. I always like to see it like on the hero itself. Yeah. But I, I think that would be cheating. <laughs> yeah, probably. Anything that combines uh, shortcuts like that, probably. So also, we, we hadn't talked about it because uh, we've been... Uh, sort of tunnel visioning on the Rexar here, but again, Necrophos is going to get picked up, so Virtus Pro, not just a counter to the, the Bristleback, but a hero that uh, obviously they're putting a lot of stock in here, so we'll see how Illidan fares this time. He is going to be the one controlling the Necrophos. Hopefully he gets off to a slightly better start than we saw in the last match, but before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's introduce these rosters. On the right hand side, we do have Team Virtus Pro for the third and final time today. Light of Heaven for the third and final time today as well, going to be playing on the Marana. One trick pony there in today's matches. Gog going to be in the mid on the Storm Spirit support again from Arzart going to be on that Earth Shaker and then down to the bottom lane JOTM going to be on the Venomancer and Illidan going to be on the Necrophos he is invisible down here to start things off him they may put some pressure on that bounty hunter but nope perhaps not in the bottom lane here on the dire side of uh, Q Panda, as they're labeled here. Got Wern playing on the Bounty Hunter down in the bottom lane. Wagamama going to be on Rexar in the mid. Then they've got a tri lane up at the top. Blue Banana going to be on the Weaver. Durham going to be on the Crystal Maiden. And their stand in Stampa going to be on the Windrunner. Here we go. Nothing too exciting. If if Necrolite can get off to a good start, though, like he probably is this game, it is going to be devastating. And we saw Power Rangers make a couple of mistakes. Uh, Rubik, when he had the blink, he went on the Necrophos who had a scepter. Oh, I missed first blood. I Did you see that? Caught the very tail end of it, but um, I essentially that was a three v two situation. I didn't expect that to happen, but yeah, looks maybe. like uh, one hero just caught out. Classic uh, Fisher second arrow combo. Arrow. Yeah. So. Well, first we're off to a good start here. Um, so in terms of item builds on the Beastmaster, I've seen a, f- a couple games with just a rush to the Ag Scepter to get that reduced cooldown on the ulti. I- is that the build that you kind of prefer here, or is just something like a Necro Book the way to go? It depends on the matchup. Uh, here, I would say a Necro Book is way better. Um, like, what hero are you really scared of buyback? Maybe a Weaver, but I doubt um, he's no, going to be that Beastmaster. difficult to kill anyways. Beastmaster. Are you talking about Necrophos? Oh, 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 yeah. I was, yeah, I was talking about Necrophos. Yes, I, was I was talking about, about Beastmaster. Beastmaster. Oh, sorry. For Beastmaster, <laughs> Scepter build, um, I don't like it in this particular matchup either. Um, I, I generally don't like Scepter Rush. I like a Scepter later, um, but Scepter Rush is generally not um, the build that I like to go for. I, I generally prefer a utility build with them, with uh, drums and Vlads if necessary, early blink decker if you have to, and BOT so you can keep a pressure and actually use your roar every time it's off cooldown. Mm-hmm. Um, but a Scepter first, it's nice, but you just don't have that many opportunities to do so because early skirmishes, they don't last that long. Like, the heroes are really low. They'll just die in, like, a fissure arrow like we just saw, and that's, like, maybe all of, like, three seconds. So the chances that you're going to be able to use Roar twice that early is is not that useful, and the range is already pretty long to begin with. 950 range um, is, is extremely long. So... Um, they have like good chasing potential with uh, Bounty Hunter. They just need like the items, like the uh, like an early mech or drums for HP. Just those uh, slight mid-game items, uh, just so you, they can win the fight, survive, and get more and more track gold. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry, it, the the range on uh, the Primal Roar it, is it 950 always? It says 950 Scepter. Mm, it's not 950 always. It's slightly increased. Okay, but I not, think it's just huge. maybe like 100 or 150. I'm not exactly sure, but I'm yeah, pretty it sure say. it's increased just slightly. Mm, okay, gotcha. It's interesting. It's I mean, we don't get to see Rexar too often. I can check so for you. Keep picking your brain here while we have the opportunity, and also while I, we have I used to play opening. Beastmaster all the time. Oh yeah, one of your uh, signature heroes. Yeah, I definitely would say that Beastmaster one. I played him like ridiculous amounts. Mm-hmm. I played him back when he was in balance with permanent and his hawk and all this good stuff. Yeah, um, he, he is fun. Six hundred range at level six hundred range with no scepter and nine fifty with scepter. Okay. So I guess pretty big, pretty big improvement. Yeah, does help. Nine fifty is pretty long. That's that's pretty far. So interesting. And of course, uh, probably needless to say, Primal War does, does cut through BKB. Yeah, I'm watching it right here, Wagamama. 
Gonna be in some trouble, there's the Fissure. God should be able to finish him off perhaps, he is low on mana here. And... Uh, Beastmaster is one tanky presence, he does use the salve, maybe just a little bit too slow, and he does fall. Um, I don't know why he walked to check the rune too. Like you do not have to walk down here to check the rune when you have a hawk there and a boar there for you. So that's just not a good decision by Wagamama there. A little sloppy. Yeah, that's true. Beastmaster has uh, basically free wards there with the hawk. So eh, a little, little greedy. Yeah, you, I suppose. you should almost always send like one hawk. You send a hawk to one rune, and then you send the board to another rune. The hawk to the rune that you're more likely to get, and the board to the one that you're less likely to get, because you can deny it if you're not going to get it. Mm -hmm. And down in the bottom lane, Virtus Pro already pressuring this tier 1 very aggressively. They've got Venno and Necro Light, so uh, we see Necro just uh, nuking the waves. Just have two points in Death Pulse here at level 4, and uh, JOTM going a 1-1-1 opener here at level 3, but already using those Plague Wards to chip away at that tower. Let's take a look at the gold graph, see how things are faring. Virtus Pro do have a nice lead set up for themselves, about 1,500 gold, somewhere about 1,200 experience or so. Not too shabby here for the five-minute mark. Though up top, Durham kind of hiding in the secret shop. I don't know if that's just a convenient Wago's spot. also or... trying to rotate before he's six. Like, yeah. you just don't do that as Beastmaster because you, you're not going to be able to get a kill, especially uh, when he has level three Call of the Wild. Um... Level 3 Call of the Wild is actually not that much better than level 2 Call of the Wild because all you get is an invisible hawk, and your hawk is not that useful in the early game. All you need is just like a very basic hawk to scout the runes, and then your Quillbore increase comes at level uh, 4, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. So I think level 3 to 4 is a big gap, but level 2 to 3 is not that big of a difference. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Up in the top, though, looks like Light of Heaven and Arzar could be in a little bit of a rough situation. Stompa is going to come up. No, they're going to initiate on the Weaver. Weaver going to fall before Windrunner can get there. Shackle not going to latch. And now Durham going to move his way out of the secret shop. He could be in a little bit of trouble here as well. Light of Heaven going to be out of mana from that last rotation. So, a uh, noble effort. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Bounty Hunter going to be in big trouble. Down he goes. God going to zip in. That'll finish him off. Dust to uh, make sure they secure that kill. And I think they may be able to grab the first tower kill of the match. Virtus Pro off to one hell of a start, though. 4-0. Here at the six and a half minute mark, and they basically won all their lanes. Look at that net worth chart. Things looking scary for Q Panda already here, Malini. Yes, indeed. Wagamama still not level six. Uh, almost seven minutes into the game, the three on two situation, giving up first blood and a couple of kills. I haven't actually get shackled, but those trees are actually down, so he doesn't. It doesn't actually latch. So I thought they were going to catch a break there, but ooh, Crystal Maiden narrowly misses an arrow. Oh, well, Moonlight Shadow going to come out. And now Bounty Hunter going to be up here as well. I'm not sure they're going to be able to survive this one. Moonlight Shadow going to be on for a bit longer here. And maybe they will. Now God going to try and turn it on the Crystal Maiden. He's going to get Frostbitten. One more auto attack. He is going to get it. Going to make it a one for one. CM for uh, the Storm Spirit. Going to be the first kill on the board here from Q Panda. But yeah, not the exchange Virtus Pro we're looking for, unfortunately. Oh, light of heaven. If he gets roared here, he's dead. Here's where having a scepter is useful. Here's where having the board is useful. And light ahead it. Oh, there's the roar. Super long range, the wild axes. That is a kill. Very nicely done by Wagamama just at the max range there. Oh, yeah, we find nice, two here. Nice play. Oh, well, yeah, they're finally back. They finally got uh, some kills, but in the meantime, Necrolite just pu pu pushing bottom. Um, he has a Bassy, so very good at pushing. And I like the Treads build on him, too. Um, some people get phase on him. Um, Tranquil, definitely not good. Uh, Tranquils are just awful. It's just a new patch, by the way. And uh, Treads is very nice because Tread talking is very useful with Sadist and also having that max HP buffer so that you can survive, uh, let's say, like a Shackle or a Roar is very, very important so you can get that burst uh, huge heal off with Death Pulse and Mech. Mm -hmm. Up in the top lane here, Blue Banana going to be in a little bit of trouble. Can they crowd control him before the time lapse? Indeed they can. And Weaver going to get dropped yet again by Arzart and God. Shackle does latch, but now Stompa potentially in a little bit of trouble here. Durham going to come in, and that will scare back the forces of Virtus Pro, but still another kill on this Weaver. They've done a great job shutting down Weaver this game. He's still got a lot of last hits, but on net worth, he's still number four because he's died twice. Yeah, and here's where the Windrunner pick is just not very useful. Like, against a Storm Spirit, like, really, what are you going to do? Like, you'll just zip into the middle of the lane. You won't have any trees. You have to, like, look for that latch, and then you're not going to be able to get it. Like, something like a Lion would just be so much better. You just, like, hex, click, so easy, guaranteed disable there. And Windranger is, like, a 
medium risk, medium reward sort of hero. Um, I guess Lion is kind of like that too because if he's caught out, he's he's dead. But at the same time, Wind Ranger, you need to be able to get kills in the early game. You can't fall too far behind, and you need to have really good shackles. And it's really difficult versus uh, their heavy physical burst or heavy magical burst lineup, which um, Wind Ranger doesn't typically do well against. Their high mobility heroes with Priests of the Moon as well as Storm Spirits are very difficult to get shackles on them. Um, and if you lose your tri lane too, it looks like Illidan is going to die here. Yep. They did smoke up. No idea they were coming, but Moonlight Shadow comes out. And support gonna come in as well. God gonna be able to catch Stompa. Stompa gonna fall before Necrolite goes down. Moonlight Shadow not gonna do a hell of a lot. He is tracked. But, oh, beautiful by Arzard right there. That's gonna keep the Necrophos alive. 30 hit points to spare. It's gonna be a 3 for nil swing. Couldn't have gone better for VP right there. Yeah, if he didn't use his buckler there, um, he would have died too. So uh, I, I see a lot of people panic. They just like try and run. But uh, we see Illidan keeping his cool, using his death pulls, um, using his buckler and surviving. And he has 12 armor right now, which is nothing to scoff at at all. And that's without the buckler um, buff too. So, I mean, that much against a something like Beastmaster with his composite damage from Axis, it makes him actually very, very difficult to kill. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. Wow, so things continue to look up uh, for Virtus Pro here. Two Midas on the field, one apiece, one on the Weaver, one on the Marana. So those carries farming relatively evenly, at least their farming tools are pretty even. Some towers are going to get exchanged here, though. The top tier one is going to be denied by Virtus Pro. And, um, oh, I'm sorry, I misread that reconnect as a tower kill. Again, that dyslexia playing with me. So just a tower deny, nothing too crazy. 9-2 to two here, though, as we approach that 11-minute mark. Virtus Pro is still with a lot of momentum. And Necrophos, much different from last game. Illidan actually the number one farmer right now on net worth. And as you mentioned, he does have that uh, mechanism up now, which will make things a bit easier. Yep, and Storm Spirit, not terribly far from away from his sword, not terribly close either, just was sitting with two robes and 1,000 gold. Wagamama looks like he is going for that arcane mech build on the Beastmaster. Uh, we haven't really seen too much out of CM either. CM, uh, generally very highly rated support pick, but sometimes she just falls a little bit too far behind, and with that early first blood too, um, it, things just went from bad to worse in this mid game for Q Pandas. Mm, can they come back from this? They have the Midas on the Weaver, and I've seen some pretty incredible comebacks with um, Weaver because he's so excellent at split pushing, but I doubt he's going to be able to do so because Earthshaker has Blink and 1500 gold already with his Arcane Boots and Storm Spirit with his early orchid will be able to get his um orchid far before weaver gets his bkb or his lincoln so if they push during that time where weaver doesn't have any defensive items or gank rather mm -hmm. um then i think they can just keep the weaver down and uh win the game through their um very nice farm Five thousand gold difference 12 minutes in we've seen we've seen worse today and we've seen people <laughs> come back from worse yeah absolutely down in the bottom lane here, there is a smoke in the nearby jungle. Illidan going to be under heavy pressure, but he is in a pretty safe position right now, right outside the tower. And of course, while I'm gearing up for that in the top, going to miss a kill on Weaver. Same story, different chapter. Arrow, uh, or pardon me, no, not Arrow. God's going to be up there, so going to have enough crowd control to finish him off. Vortex and Fissure. This poor Weaver just can't catch a break. He's it was so pretty much squishy. the same way he died last yeah. time, the one that you saw. Yeah. Yeah, he is really squishy. This this is where you go straight threads, bracer, um, just straight HP, so you can survive until time lapse. If you can't survive until, until time lapse, the Weaver is such a useless hero. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly right, as we've seen. So Q Panda, I mean, what do they do here? What what is their their um their golden ticket to get back into this match? Now that Weaver has been kind of continually slowed down here. Every time he starts to amass a bit of gold, they pick him off. They call Jerex, get him back oh, on the team. Call Jerex. Strat pause, we gotta get Jerex in here. Um, they need track gold. That's that's yeah. the most important thing about their lineup. And their lineup was based around getting a lot of track kills, but they only have two kills. And Bounty Hunter's been involved in one of those two kills. I don't think it was a track kill, um, but they just need kills. They need, I think that Weaver should not have gone Midas and should have just gone for uh, early like drums and treads and then just keep fighting with them. Um, and just exchange kills and get track gold because their late game is not not that great. Weaver by himself, especially if Storm Spirit is similar form, he can just get a sheep to counter whatever item he's going to get. A sheep orchid will definitely counter a Lincoln's uh, sheep also counters BKB. So they can definitely kill um, the Weaver over and over in the late game. So they can't really play the farming war. On top of that, you have a Necrolite. On top of that, you have a Blink Echo Initiation and a Priest of the Moon. Waga gets caught out in mid. Yep, going to be an easy kill right here as God zips forward. 
pretty easy. So they can't wait. Control. They can't wait until the late game. They're not going to win the late late game unless like VP throws again, um, which is a pretty decent possibility. But that's not something that you want to rely on. Uh, just like hope your team, uh, your opponent is bad. That's not the way to win. You want to yeah. do it by good execution and by good decision making. So they need to get together. They need to get kills. They also need to protect Wagamama um, a little bit better in mid. He's one in three right now as their mid. He needs to be able to farm up his mech so that they can win those earlier engagements. They need to fight before AA gets his blink. Dagger um, before the Midas on Rana starts kicking in, before the Storm Spirit gets Orchid, but that window is very, very small. And they need to get kills within the next two or three minutes, I'd say. Yeah, Storm Spirit getting pretty close to that Orchid. Has the first Oblivion Staff, another Robe of the Magi, and a good 1400 in the banker. So he's got that double damage rune on. Looks like he was considering the engage onto Stampa, but not going to get hyper aggressive here. And uh, they're just going to kind of slow push this tower, chip away at it. Virtus Pro going to have a five man squad here in the mid. And they are ready to team fight. Necrophos going to use the mech to start things off. Nice little armor buff. And they'll just slow siege the tower. Necrolite also has a point booster as well. Radiance top and, tower is um, under attack. Yeah. Q pad trying to decide how they want to handle this. Yeah, slow siege. They don't have the Weaver with him. He's going to try and take out this bottom tier one, but it's a 5v4. So once this tower falls, Q pad going to have to be a little bit careful. Here. Too. Yeah. I think they can just go. Maybe wait for the mech. It's up in 10 seconds, but yep. the tower is just so low. He's going to get denied. There's the zip forward. Get to connect with the bounty hunter. They'll be able to drop him before he can uh, go invisible. And they have a jab a one on for Storm now. too. Yeah. Oh, so now yeah. like it's going to be nearly impossible for Bounty Hunter to go around and look for kills. And with the gem pickup, v if VP 5 mans, they will crush Q Panda's 5 man. Um, so now you kind of have to resort to split pushing because the items are going to come out very, very soon. Um, maybe once you get the mech, you can, you can do that. Uh, five man that is oh, looks like they're going for a three man right now uh, they are going to try and roar out illidan on bottom he is at 1300 hp Earthshaker is also behind him so he sees it coming this is going to be disastrous if they can get one more person but looks like illidan is in a very very good position to react to this gank yep exactly there's going to be actually a five man gank down here as well they're going to be smoked up the invisible bounty hunter and blue banana and the front lines on that weaver they're just going to charge forward the tower is pretty low, so that is one thing that Ilden may have to be careful of, but they do have a glyph available. Earthshaker Radiant still hiding in the trees back here. Very close to his blink, about 200 off. It's really obvious because they're so far behind that they have to get kills. Yep. Uh-oh, there we go. Moonlight Shadow. There's the ulti. <laughs> Double ulti. That'll be the end of the Weaver. Yet again, going to be able to drop him before the time lapse comes. Crystal Maiden going to throw a freezing field. It's going to cost her a life, though. That'll be a two for nil. Oh man, it's just a disaster for QPad. There's the zip forward. Wagamama gonna get caught. I would say GG pretty soon. Yeah. It depends on how resilient QPanda feels. I don't feel like they have the late game to take this, um, but definitely not. I, I don't think it would be a shame to call GG at this point. But I mean, as we saw, VP can throw pretty hard. Yep. They're <sighs> they're out of that. options though. It's it's. It's really bad when you know you have to gank and the other team knows that you have to gank to get back in the game because they were just so well prepared for it. Illidan sitting in the trees, AA sitting behind him as an Earthshaker. When, when you're that out of options, the play just becomes really easy for an opposite team because they know exactly what you're going to do. And we, we saw that. They, they know they have track kills. They know they don't have better late games, so they have to go for the kills. VP knows that. They react, and now Q Panda, like, they're just stuck in this position where they can't really do anything. They can't five man. They can, like, barely split push. Um, oh, Bounty, Bounty Hunter can't go around. They can't do Roshan. They don't have any map control for that. Yeah. Um, so, oh. I I guess just um, to hope for the best and hope that your opponent is bad because that's pretty much all that um, they can hope for right now. 16 to 2 kill advantage. Only, I don't know. I don't even know how many track kills are in this game. Maybe one? I think none. I definitely. None? Yeah. I know at least one of them for sure wasn't. The second one I can't remember. So maybe one it's not been good and we look at the kda here yeah god again god playing really well here eight one and three played really well this game and really well last game yeah it's looking good so i i kind of agree i mean q panda kind of out of options their five man strategy not going to be too effective i mean they could try like a pocket row strat but uh, i don't know that that would dig them out of this hole all too much and it would be pretty risky I don't know. I, I just don't know what they can do here. Bounty Hunter is so far behind. He's only level 8. All he has are treads. 
and a magic wand for the most part. He's just got a casual circlet hanging out there. Um, God, I don't know. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Yeah. Um, again, I think part of it has to do with the draft. The one ranger just not very useful in the laning phase. Definitely not useful when you're in this situation, and definitely not useful when you haven't hit any big shackles. So, um, I can see where they're going with their lineup, though. It was like a, hey, we'll try and win our lanes and then just gank around, and get track gold. That's that. Well, that's the basic gist of their lineup. But it all fell apart in the early laning phase. Um, when bounty hunters in a two-on-one situation on bottom, they're not getting anything out of it in the other lanes. Now the orc is up on G, Brianna mm, actually might live. No. Nope. nope. Down he goes. Illidan going to be able to finish him off. Reaper Scythe going to come out, as will the Moonlight Shadow. Not going to be necessary, but still for good measure, I suppose. This poor Weaver, man. He has just not had a good game. Oh, five and one. They've just been continually crowd controlling him down before he can time lapse. That's one thing Virtus Pro have done very well. They've staggered those stuns to just completely shut down this Weaver. I don't think really he's, good at that. I don't think he's time lapsed once. <laughs> I would, I would agree with you there. I don't think he's time lapsed once either. Yeah, or at least not at any meaningful time when he's going to escape death. So, uh, looking grim. Look, it's looking very dark. Well, Weaver's farm still isn't terrible though. Still trying to get towards that BKB. He does have that mithril hammer about a thousand off the recipe. Meanwhile, Virtus Pro just continuing to knock down these outer towers to take out the tier two in the top. God just gonna hop forward, gonna grab another easy kill on the bounty hunter. Shackle gonna latch, but only so much good that's gonna do at this point. Tier two in the mid gonna fall for sure. And I think at this point, GG and out seems appropriate really at any point here. Somewhere about 18,000 gold lead at the 21 minute mark. Uh, pretty damn significant. Yep, and no dip in that gold lead at all. They just have not caught any sort of break this game. And, um, yeah, Necrolite, it, it would have been pretty much the same with, like, any hero in that situation. It's not really a, not really an outdraft, I'd say. Maybe slightly VP has a stronger pick, but they just got outplayed in all three lanes. There's no way you should lose a three-on-two three situation on top as badly as they did. Um... Uh, especially with that that's not a bad try lane either they have like three range heroes uh they can set up uh shackle shots with the uh crystal maiden and frostbite too and weaver is a very tanky hero so they can just wait for them to go on him and then um just play uh defensively and they can kind of like roam around the map make the storm spirit feel scared i thought that's something that they should have done that they didn't do they could have just let weaver stay alone on top um hopefully he doesn't get caught by uh, fissure into arrows um, and just gank the storm and kill storm over and over let beastmaster get an earlier level six in storm and then just snowball from there but instead they decided to focus their efforts on the top lane protect blue banana who to be honest hasn't done anything this game zero five and one he's been farming but still working on his bkb uh, but it's not going to be very useful because they just have immense amounts of stun lock on the side of vp Poor Blue Banana. You're absolutely right about that, my friend. Not his game for sure. Bounty Hunter in a similar state. 1-5-0. and oh. Not where you want to see a Bounty Hunter. He's one of the more active heroes that should be moving about the map, picking up those kills. But, uh, yeah, problems across the board here. The Tier 3 Tower in the mid getting slow sieged here. Gonna fall before too long. No Glyph available for Q-Pad. Gonna be coming up in about 20 seconds. But having this Necro now that he's pretty farmed. He's got an Ag, he's got a Mech. He can just keep spamming that death pulse for the sustainability, using that mech on every rotation, tanking the tower. Just waiting for one of these arrows to connect. Going to be off the mark again, but here we go. God going to pop in. That'll be the end of the Beastmaster. Maybe a little bit of overkill coming out, but a monster kill for God. It'll be a two for nil to start it off. Down goes the tier three. And these racks, I think, are destined to fall here, Merlini. There's a glyph available. Maybe one last stand for the Q pandas. But... Looking, looking grim indeed. God gonna hop forward again. Stompa gonna fall. There it is. GG coming out from Stompa. And that's gonna be game three. Virtus Pro looking very strong over Q pad. Unfortunate game. Uh, just not on par with VP in terms of uh, individual skill or team skill. I think they need to go back to the drawing board because this game was just utter devastation from the get-go uh -huh. yep exactly right so that was game three of six today guys we do have three more coming up for you we're at that halfway point of day nine star ladder season eight coverage i'm zaori with me is merlini gonna take another short break here play more dota coming your way here on beyond the summit guys thank you so much for joining us stay tuned